Uh, that's a good question. I'm sorry. The, the question is, what are we? The question is, what are we doing to reach out to minority voters? Uh, I think I think there's two two ways of answering that. One is on on substantive issues. I think we've chosen issues that matter to minority communities. Uh, some of the one of one obvious one is the drug war. Uh, we get we get very very good response on that issue, especially from young black men uh, who either themselves or or people they know have been railroaded into the criminal justice system for mere possession. Um, so and 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 that's something that I talk about pretty much every single uh, interview and every single stop. Um, it's not always it's not always about uh, drugs. I do talk about freedom to put into your body what you want, but I also talk about how it's ruined a lot of lives and livelihoods. It costs a lot of money, not just in incarceration enforcement costs. Those are the ones that we always talk about. But what about all that lost economic activity of people who have lost their employability because they have a criminal record? So that's one issue. But we're also going to uh, yesterday, Tuesday, I was in Lynchburg at a a church that at a, at a, it was a candidate forum that was run by a voter group that's African American. It was open to the community, so the audience was was of all races. Um, but you know they were very receptive to the idea that the Republicans and Democrats both are not serving their community. They're receptive to the idea of school choice. That's another one that you know I talk about all the time. And you know everywhere that there's been a pilot program for school choice is the people who are most underserved by the public school systems who most want it. They're always oversubscribed. And when you look at the D.C. voucher program being killed by the Democrats in Congress in 2009, and you see Adrian Fenty saying that his party is on the wrong side of school reform, there's a lot of people and, and a lot of minorities who are looking for something else. And the fact that, you know, I'm the only candidate who's been talking about school choice from day one of the campaign and that I have the best, uh, the best uh, proposals on that issue, I think really, really attracts a lot of people. Marriage equality. What? Marriage equality. Mm. Sorry? Marriage equality. Oh, marriage equality. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's another one. Uh, that, that, I, I think that, that issue kind of speaks for itself, especially among the libertarian crowd. Uh, if we're going to have government recognition of, uh, and regulation of certain uh, relationships, we should make those those relationships and legal recognition available on an equal basis as a matter of personal freedom and equality. And uh, I'm the only one who has is, who is very explicitly said that I'm going to talk about this the entire campaign, everywhere I go. I go into Tea Party uh, groups and I, you know, I, I, I say, look, I, we disagree on this, but, uh, and I, I explain why I believe in it. And afterwards, I, I get people telling me that they disagree with me on that issue, but they like what I had to say, they respect me for saying it, and I have some people who come up and, and tell me that they didn't even know that interracial marriages were once illegal in this state, and so I think that, the, I think, I think that you know, I'm in a unique position to go to talk to people about uh, gay marriage and, and explain to them why a lot of their arguments against gay marriage, recognizing gay marriages, were used 50 years ago against interracial marriages. Not all the arguments are the same, but a lot of them are, and they're very bad. Uh, so that's you know that's another one we're trying to uh, tomorrow uh, Saturday in Charlottesville we're going to Charlottesville Pride event. Uh, the following weekend I think it's a it's a Saturday as well we're going to be in Roanoke for a Pride event. Um, so yeah we're reaching out to you know I want voters from every every group you can imagine in Virginia. Yes. Right. Uh, I think it's an important issue, but that's actually somewhere something that I'm actually learning more about. I'll, I'll be the first to admit I need to learn more about that issue. So I, I, I do, I do think the environment is important. I think that uh, certainly moving forward in a lot of the issues that are coming up with energy exploration, we ought to have uh, you know strong liability rules so that nobody's getting protected from liability. That goes for every energy industry, including you know wind turbines that kill birds across the board. Yes? As part of your campaign message, I noticed that you have Virginia is open for business. 
Um, as I'm sure you're aware, you know, Virginia has transportation problems, and it's had transportation problems. We haven't made a good transportation investment in probably the past 15 to 20 years. Um, what is your plan to, in, to uh, increase transportation throughout the state such that it benefits Virginia businesses and keeps your campaign promise that Virginia is open for business? Uh, so, I, I guess it's it's kind of a complicated issue, but there are three there are three general ideas that I think we ought to uh, focus on. One is prioritizing spending. So, you know, we, we did have a, a major tax increase. We didn't have to do that even to increase the spending that we do on transportation. Uh, there are several things we can do to, to decrease spending to move money over to transportation. One would be to end the drug war, uh, but another would be to, uh, to reduce the administrative bloat in education. The, uh, uh, I think Virginia is very high on the tables of administrator to teacher ratio. Uh, it's something like 1.8 to 1, where it used to, you know, a generation or two ago, it was the opposite of that. And only a small amount of that can be attributed to increased special needs uh, uh, services. So um, one of those, and, and one source of those is, uh, one source of the administrative bloat is state mandates. Um, but, you know, we spend something like $6 billion at the state level on education. You know, there's a lot of money that we can save. Uh, so, so, so prioritizing spending so that it increased expenditures on transportation don't require increased taxes is one thing. Second thing, uh, I would like to see less centralized bureaucratic decision making. I think that it's, it's a little bit Soviet the, the way that we, uh, we have the entire, you know, the, the Department of Transportation, Commonwealth Transportation Board making a lot of decisions about a huge amount of money, determining which projects go forward. I think. Decentralizing that, that process where, where, where local authorities are more accountable to the public and have more local knowledge about the relative merits of various spending projects, I think that's a good idea. And third, I think we should move, we should move towards more towards user pace systems that, that create prices on road usage, which allows economic calculation, which allows for more attraction of private capital and less investment risk. Um, we moved away from that in the transportation bill. We moved away from a gas tax towards a, you know, a lot of different taxes, but a big increase in the sales tax. There's geographic subsidies and, and geographic surtaxes. If you imagine a, a poor family in Hampton Roads that doesn't even own a car, and they're paying a vastly increased uh, sales tax, that's a very regressive tax and it's very unfair. So I think that's a huge... Uh, so I think that was a huge mistake, the way we did that. Um, so the funding, you know, regardless of, of what level of spending, we ought to do the revenue raising in an intelligent manner, and, and that's, you know, we're moving away from that. So those are, those are three principles. And I think, I think, you know, we should be setting us up for 30 to 50 years of prosperity. We constantly have arguments over what are we doing for the next two years, one, two, three, four years. Uh, and that's, that's a recipe for what we've seen over the last 30 years, which in Northern Virginia is, is sort of a generation-long decline in uh, the...